everybody. How's it going? Uh, thank you for having me. I'm sorry I couldn't be there, but because of everything that's going on, it's just best this way. But we are still going to have a good time, okay? So uh, I just want to go over a few things with you uh, before we get started. Uh, one is the rules. It's only uh, one rule. Rule number one is have fun. That's it. It's the only rule I got. Um, now move on to some supplies we got here. Everybody should have two brushes. This right here is a, uh, it's not a flat edge, that is a screwdriver, <laughs> but it's a straight edge, okay? So it's a straight edge brush, and this is a round tip brush, okay? So everybody should have a straight edge and a round tip. Um, you should have some type of water. Um, everybody should have their paints, okay? So there are uh, seven colors we're going to be using today. I have six in here because there's only six spots, but on your plates, there should be seven colors. Um, so it should be red, orange, yellow dark blue, light blue, and white, and black, okay? So, um, and then you should have your canvas board right here, okay? So, um, it is blank, not for long though. So, this painting that we're going to do is very simple, very easy. Um, it shouldn't take us long at all. I'm going to break things down into steps for you. And so, step number one is going to be doing the background. Step number two is going to be adding in the trees. And then step number three is going to be um, adding some stars on there. So I'm going to do the background. I'm going to show you how we're going to blend the colors. And then I'm going to um, quickly show you how I'm going to lay down the trees. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a particular technique for doing the brushes on the trees. Um, I'm sorry, the leaves and the branches on the trees. Uh, and then um, once that's finished, we're gonna finish it off with the stars, okay? So the one that I'm doing right now, you should already have in front of you so you can see how it's gonna look. And I'm gonna be doing that right now, okay? So the first thing we're gonna start off with, and this is step one, and, and when I say I'm breaking it down into steps, it's because I know, you know, everybody works at different speeds. So I'm gonna say step one, I'm gonna do it, and then you can pause. Okay, you can pause the video and you can replay, uh, replay, check it out. You can replay me back as many times as you need. Okay, um, so everybody will be doing the background together, everybody will be working on the trees together, and then everybody will be doing the stars together. And that way, it's a short video, but it'll be like I'm there the whole time. All right, cool. So, the first thing we're going to get started with, we're going to get our straight edge brush, this is this one right here, and we're going to do the background. Now, couple things about uh, the background. Um, we're going to be blending the colors, and in between each color, we're going to use white. So white is going to be our buffer, okay? So we're going to start with blue, and I'm going to take my blue, so my straight edge, and yeah, I'm just going to go across like back and forth, okay? Very simple, very easy. And we're gonna go, we're gonna paint blue maybe two and a half inches down. Okay. So, one thing I don't really care about the brush strokes because I don't think that the sky is perfect. And so, I don't think that the paint has to be perfect on here. But if you don't, like, say I started here in the middle, you can see where this brush stroke started. Okay. Now, that wouldn't bother me because, like I said, the sky is not perfect. So, it's organic. It's a living thing. But if it's going to bother you, then you're going to just go from edge to edge, okay? Making sure that you're starting right on the edge, okay? The thing about that one is, though, when you go from edge to edge like that, you're going to get paint on the sides. So, just be aware of that, okay? So we got our blue about two and a half inches down, right? And now we're going to come in with the white. So we're going to be using white with each color, right? We don't want to contaminate the white too much. So I'm just going to take a little bit like this, and I'm going to just take it from the corner because I don't want to get blue all in all of the white because we're going to be using it for the other colors, okay? And I'm going to come right down here just before the blue is over, and I'm just going to start laying the white down. So it's a little bit in the blue, but it's not fully in the blue. It's like right in the middle, right? And then the next color is red. And I'm going to take a little bit 
of red right on the corner. And I'm going to go right where we laid the white down. And I'm just going to start blending that back and forth. Okay. And what happens is, and you might be able to feel the difference. Maybe not. I can feel it. But blue is, 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 is a translucent color. It's a little thinner, right? And so... What happens is, is that when you start to mix white in there, because white is a little thicker, it's a little bit more opaque, you can kind of feel the difference in the heaviness, okay? And so we're going to start blending that all the way down, okay? And then we're going to go and we're going to get some more white, okay? And just like we did before, we're going to mix a little bit of that white at the bottom of the red, all right? And again, I'm getting a little bit of white, but I am going back um, to at least two times with it. So if you want to, you know, pick up a little bit more and just go for it, that's fine. But I like, you know, do a little bit, see how it looks and, you know, grab some more if you need to. Okay. So we have that. The next color is going to be orange. Right. So we're going to take that and mix it in. And while we're at the reason that we have the white here in the first place is so that it, it does act like a buffer, but what it does is that it kind of tones uh, the colors down, okay? So that it's not like so vibrant because this is a sunset, right? And so, um, sorry, I just turned it around really quickly just to make sure everything, so I can actually see it. I can't get a good look at it while it's um facing you guys, but. Okay, so now we have the orange, right? And I'm going to get a little bit more white. And again, this is your painting, right? So if you like more of one color than the other, go for it. If you're like, nah, I'm really feeling like this orange and I kind of just want it to be that, finish off with orange. That's completely up to you. I'm going to go in with the yellow right now under the orange. Because I feel like, I get a feeling that we're all getting the hang of this. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like we kind of got it. So again, we're doing a color. We're going to do a white little buffer. Blend it back and forth. And the blending is literally just going back and forth. You're just sweeping. You don't have to put a lot of pressure. You're just gently guiding it back and forth. Um, hold on, let me get a little bit more white. Um, but yeah, you're just, you're just guiding it back and forth. Okay. Way too much white, but that's fine. Cause we will use it later. Okay. And now I'm about to hit the last color. So do you see how easy that was? And again, it's just a back and forth, back and forth, you know, wash on, wash off <laughs> karate kit method. Now I'm going in with the blue and we're going to do the bottom. And again, still just back and forth, back and forth. Now, this uh, blue is light, so I'm going to go, I'm going to put it on again, just because I want it to be a little darker than what it's showing up. But again, if you like it to be that color, then that's completely fine too. Okay. And just like that, step one is finished. Okay, we have a nice gradient of colors again if you like a color more than another then have more of it if you want most of yours to be blue let it be blue if you want um you really feeling this red um purple that's happening because the blue and red are mixing together and making purple keep it my favorite color is orange maybe you just want an orange sunset this is your painting remember we're having fun do it the way that you want to do i'm here to guide but i'm not here to say this is exactly how it must look okay so this is step one okay good job so if you Need, if anybody needs to catch up or anybody needs more time, now is the time. Just pause the video. This is step one. Okay. So, now moving on to step two. Step two is uh, fairly simple. Um, you will be using your round tip brush, and we're going to be doing the trees, okay? So, uh, I'm going to put some lines on here now so we can kind of... Um, lay out where we want our leaves, our trees to be. 
and then on a different board I'm going to show you a technique to do the leaves with okay so right now what what, what we're going to be focusing on and now okay it's two things I'll say this before I get started what's going to make this look real is the depth that we're going to create and so with perspective um when things are closer to you they're bigger they're smaller when they're farther away so that's what we're going to create on here by making the trees different sizes and that'll give us our depth okay so the trees on the ends will be much taller they're probably going to go um right up to the blue right and then the other ones will probably fall somewhere between the orange and the yellow and go down you can do as many trees as you want on here um but one thing that i do want to say about these trees is that um they're trees they're living things they're all different right they're different just like we are so they're not going to be symmetrical they're you know they're going to be asymmetrical they're going to be different um some uh, branches will you know have more space in between them than others and that's fine everybody's tree is not going to look the same and they shouldn't because every forest doesn't look the same okay so um really quickly this is what i'm going to do I'm going to start my tree. I want it to start right about here. Okay. And I'm doing just a thin line because once we start building, once we start adding the leaves to it, we'll build the trees up and you'll see that. Okay. So we're going to have one here. I'm going to have another one about here. Right. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to I'm going to paint it right on the edge because I want I want a tree to look like it's got cropped off. Anytime you do something that's cropped off, it looks fancy. So we're going to be fancy. OK, so I got a tree here. Uh, let me see. What do I want? It? I want it to start about here. OK, um, I got an, and always go thin and then get thicker. Right. Because you can always add, but you can't take away. OK, I'm going to do another tree about here. All right, um, but I'm going to do another tall one. And that's the thing. Remember I said we want it to look like perspective, but we don't have to do, you know, just like these are big. Like, you know, you, you, you know, when you were a kid, you do like that little volley picture where everything's right here and then the road kind of goes back and it gets smaller. Maybe it's just me. I can't hear your reaction. But um, sometimes, you know, you can get a nice depth by just doing two big trees that are in front of you and then that one tree that's in the middle that's behind you further back. So that's what that tree is going to be. Um, I think I'm going to do another one here and then, you know, we can start getting smaller. In this section. And the thing about it is that when we do the branches and the leaves, um, they're going to overlap each other. Okay. So that, and that's fine if they do overlap. So one thing, um, one last thing I'm going to do before we move to um, me showing you the technique, I'm just going to take my brush. So real quick, here you go. I'm sure you can all see it. These are how my trees look. So I have about mm, three decent sized ones and then four little ones in the middle. And like I said, they're pretty much starting from right under the blue. And then they get smaller from there. And I went thin. Because we can always build the tree up, but we can't take away. All right. So this is where they are. Okay. And one last thing before I show you the technique, I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to go across the bottom. Not a thick line. All right. It doesn't have to be thick, but we're just going to take my brush and I'm just going to go across the bottom. And what that does is creates. It creates a ground. Okay, so now our trees are actually on something. And again, mine is thin. Do you want to make yours thicker? Go for it. But this is where mine is, okay? So I'm going to put this, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this over here so that you guys can see it. And I'm going to get another board. And I'm going to show you, so I'm going to put it right here so you guys can still see if you, you know, need um, help with that. And I'm going to take this board right here. Okay. And so you can see how this tree is going to look once we're finished. Right. Once we start adding the brush strokes. So let me show you how to make that brush stroke. Okay. So 
Again, we're still using our round tip brush. We're dipping it in the black. And um, if maybe, if you wanna test this out, maybe, you know, you test it out on the paper towel next to you. But what you're gonna do is you're just gonna put the brush down and brush outward, okay? So I'll do it again. You're gonna put the brush down and brush outward. Down, out, down, out, down, out, down, out, okay? That's how you do it. Down, out, down, out. And what, and what it is, why we're using a round tip is because what happens is, is that when you put pressure for the down part, you're getting most of the shape of this uh, round tip brush. And then as you stroke out, and since you're lifting it up, it's just getting the tip of it, okay? Which creates that little um, outward line, okay? So down, out, down, out, okay? So right here, I'm going to draw a line, okay? And that would be like our tree. And let me just... And I'm just gonna go down, out, down, out. Put a little paint on there. Down, out, down, out, down, out, down, out, down, out. Okay, do you see how this tree is coming along? And that's just the one side. Down, out, down, out. I'm gonna add some on this side, but I'm gonna stick over here. Okay, do you see how this tree is coming along? Now, for the smaller ones, I'm gonna make another line, right? For the smaller ones, you can kind of just go straight across. Boop, 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 right? Because they're small. So it doesn't really, it's not going to matter. The detail of them is not going to matter because they're so small, right? So these are your two trees. Like I said, they don't have to be even. You see the spaces off here, right? They can be asymmetrical, even in this bigger one. They can be asymmetrical because that's how trees grow, okay? And this is how over here... Is how you do the brush strokes, okay? So if you need to, you can replay that part for anybody that needs it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start adding the brush strokes to this, okay? So you know, just down, out, down, out, down, out, down, out, right? Okay, I'm going to work on this, okay, and then I'll come back and I'll show you um, what that looks like, okay. As you can see, I'm still here, adding my brushes in to my trees. What I am noticing, and I'll just show you right here, is as I started to add the brushes in, you can kind of tell the difference where the first line we drew was, and... Uh, where the brushes are like they look like they're two different colors So what you can do is just get a little black paint and go in and just you know cover that up and make it solid, okay? Okay, so that's one thing that I was uh, Noticing and again is when you go and you um, When you want to go over something like let's say even in the background if there was a color that you're like Oh, I want more of it or even now when you're doing these trees and you're like, oh, I want to make this more solid. I want to make it more black. What you do is you put it down, right? Let it dry and then put more on top. Don't try to put a lot on there because what happens is, is you will be painting and the more paint you add and brush, the more you're just picking the paint back up. So what you want to do is you want to lay down a color, let it dry, add some more to it, let it dry, add some more to it. This paint does not take that long to dry. You can even go over with your hands and help it to dry a little bit. It'll take maybe two or three minutes, and then you can go and add some more, okay? So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just adding to my trees right now. And I'll turn it around so you can see. Still doing the same technique. Okay. okay. I'm skipping some spaces, really giving the trees. And then this tree over here, remember I wanted it to look cropped, so. And that's the thing, the tree that I wanted it to be cropped will stand in front of, you know, some of the trees I painted. So if your trees blend in together, that's completely fine. Because again, 
That's how it'll be in the forest. And I want to go over. I want to go over um, some of my trunks because they're looking a little transparent. And I want them to get thicker. Okay, come back over here with this one. It's also looking a little transparent. Okay, and if you need to go over the ground we made, then you can do that also. Okay. It's fun to paint this upside down. But it's also, you get a completely different viewpoint of it when it's, when you're looking right at it. Okay. All right. So, by doing that technique, we got our trees. Okay. So, that was step two. So, if you need to go back and watch me do the brush techniques on here, we can go back. back. This is how mine is turning out right now. We only have one more step left, and that's for the stars, okay? So, if you need to take a break, now would be the time to pause the video so that you can see where everybody is and go back if you need to go back, okay? Okay, so our last and final step, okay, is the stars. And then if you're going to use... tip then you just fill it up and for the round tip I will use this tip where you can use both right so you have paint on the round tip brush you take this brush and just not metal to metal but body to body and just lightly Lightly, okay. Honestly, that is what I recommend. Now, this whole time I've been saying, you know, you can choose, you can do what you want. If that's, you know, you know, this works better for you, that works better for you, that's fine. But honestly, that tapping is what I would recommend, okay. And you can see the stars that's up there. And you don't need a lot of paint on there because what will happen is, is that if you tap, a, a glob will come down, like even. You can kind of see, like that's a little bit more than what I would have wanted, but I mean, you know, stars are different sizes, so I ain't worried about it. And just in the blue area, and there you go. All done. So that was step three. So if you need to go back and rewind, now would be the time, but it's all done. You have now created your beautiful sunset fall piece, okay? Thanks, guys. I hope that you followed the rules. I hope that you had fun. Um, if you, um, had a good time and you want a party of your own, then, um, we will have cards there for you guys. I had a good time doing this. I hope you had a good time doing this. Simple, easy. This is a braggable painting. So everybody should go home and brag. Like, look what I did. It was super easy. And the most important part is you had fun about it. All right. Thanks for having me.